Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's answer the question, what exactly is a peak file and do I need them? And let's look at other cache information too. All right, so I want to show you what peak files are, where they're stored, how you can change that location, how you can improve performance if you're in a work group. A peak file, the .pek, is a representation of what an audio waveform looks like. Because when you load audio in any program on a computer, it has to build that little picture of that waveform. It was invented by some guy years ago. That visual representation of a waveform is not an audio file. It's a picture of what the audio file looks like. And everything, every program builds those. And to make sure that they don't build them every time, they put them in a location like a cache. Uh, Premiere Pro is no different. It builds them. So have a look at this timeline that I have here. I've got a bunch of stems loaded in here and you know it, it's built all of these files and they're so I can see exactly what each one of these uh, is doing so I can see there's something important here, there's something here. That's the value of these uh, peak files and when I imported them that's where the, they showed up. Now in the edit menu, Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, preferences, if you go to Media Cache, this is where peak files and CFA files are stored. You can browse and pick a custom location for the cache. Uh, I'm just using the default location. So we know a peak file is a picture of a waveform. What's a CFA file? Well, when you bring in something like an MP3, they're really made just to play forward. They are not frame or sample accurate. So Premiere Pro creates a CFA file, and that stands for conformed audio. This is a much better format for editing. And that's where I've got this uh, particular location here. It's actually in different folders. Premiere Pro makes a peak file folder each day that you open up Premiere Pro and you import new media. It won't make new peak files just because you open Premiere Pro. If you open a project that you've already written those peak files, these ones were written um, uh, five days ago. So I don't have to do anything. I just open my project, but that's where they're located. And I can delete all of these uh, cache files. I don't want to do that um, right now I'm, uh, automatically. I'm going to manually delete all of these and show you what happens when we uh, load this up. It will make these again. So I'm going to close this project. I'm going to select all these and delete all of these open that project up again, and boom. I mean, it was really fast, but it built those, those um, um, files quickly. If you load in a very long clip, a long audio or video clip, that's maybe an hour or so long, you'll see a little indicator in the bottom right-hand corner as it's writing the file. And that will keep going. Uh, you can edit right away. It's just, it's building the preview and it gives you a little indicator. You can turn that off if you want. So let's turn off automatic um, peak file creation. Back in the preferences, audio, you can turn off generate waveforms automatically during import. I'll click OK. It doesn't get rid of what's already there. Again, I'm going to close that up, delete that, and it's telling me this is what I was hoping I wouldn't have to do, but uh, I'm going to have to quit Premiere Pro. and delete them. All right. 
So now you'll see there are no peak files. And if I start hitting play, it's going to build them while it plays. If I jump ahead, it's going to build them in that location. So it's building new ones here. This is that old folder. So I bet you they're in here. There they are. That's today's folder and it's putting them inside there. So that's the, the trade-off. If, you, if you're having uh, issues and you want to choose not to build them automatically, great. They won't be built unless you mouse over and then it starts to build them. So we can also change the location and make the peak files in the same location as the media. And this is great for work groups. If you're in a work group and if you have multiple users and they're opening this same project and it's on a server, every single, with the default settings in Premiere Pro, every single user is gonna build local peak files on everybody's computer. That's a giant waste of time, especially if there's large projects with, with lots of media. Why doesn't the first person that, that imports the media or opens the project build them on the server? Now when I connect, all the peak files and CFA files will already be written. So how do we do that? Well, back in the edit menu, preferences, media cache, save CFA and peak files, next to the original media. So here's two folders I have here that this is where they, they will be written. Not when I click OK, because remember this, this is, you can't overwrite this um, because they've already been written in one place. And Premiere Pro is pointing to that local folder. Um, that's where the peak files is. So I'm gonna have to delete and do this all again. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna have to turn on I'll go turn on um, generate automatically when importing. Okay, so there's my files. Again, I'll quit Premiere Pro down in here, delete them back into Premiere Pro. Watch these two folders right here. There they go. So now each file has a peak file beside it. It looks the same, it performs the same, it's the same example, a hit play, they're, they're there. That's the, the media files haven't changed the location. It's just now instead of writing uh, here, in this example, it's, it's beside the media itself, anything else that, that's needed, those CFA or peak files. It, there's no right or wrong with this. It's how you want to work with generating those uh, peak files. Now, my buddy Matt at Adobe, uh, when he was doing this presentation, this exact presentation I'm doing here, um, he did talk about a few important things. The, f the files were originally in here, uh, and I rewrote them over here. You can't move the files that are here and move them to that server location. Now, if we go into this folder, um, again, this is where all the the the, uh, the peak files are. They're in the in my app data, which is a hidden folder on Windows. It's in the library on the Mac, which is also a hidden folder. Um, and there is common peak files. Back in the common, there's also the media cache. Um, which is a database for all of these files here. Now, these files are not just um, peak files and CFA files. There's over 2,000 files in here, and I recently closed my cache. These files are machine-specific. The IMS files are machine-specific. You cannot share these anywhere. They have to be saved locally, and they're tiny files. They're a couple of K uh, each, but you can't move those files. Uh, that was one thing that Matt said. Now, another important thing, if caches are being constantly updated, this should not be happening. 
It might be the IMS time that it has written down. It might be a server issue that the IMS time is being changed by the server, causing more caching. Now that's a very specific thing that he wanted to point out. Um, and it would only be if you're using this stuff on a server. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more information of what the heck are those peak files and do I need them? And can I delete them? And he, yeah, sure, you can delete your whole cache. Delete everything and Premiere Pro will make the stuff it needs every single time. Again, this is made mostly for performance or for visual representations of things. Delete your cache, bring it back in, whatever. But uh, the peak files are very useful. Those little audio waveforms, all of those things that our Premiere Pro is doing in the background, very important. And like I showed, you can have the option of writing that media uh, beside the original files. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen and pay attention at meetings, especially when someone really smart like Matt is talking to me, and turn that into a useful tutorial for you.